In this video, we're going to continue our discussion with flaws of voting. So the next one I want to talk about is the monotonicity criterion. This is when a candidate who wins the first election and then gains additional support without losing any of the original support should also win a second election. So the board account, plurality with elimination, and pairwise comparison method can violate the monotonicity criterion. All right, so let's use the reference table below to determine who the winner is by plurality with elimination. Well, first of all, I need to add up the total number of votes. So that'll be 7 plus 13 plus 11 plus 10. All right, so let's go with the first round with this. So X has 7 plus 10, that's 17 first place votes. Y has 11, and Z has 13. So X has the most first place votes, so that's 17 divided by 41. That's approximately 0.41, and we know 0.41 is less than 5 tenths. So that's not a majority. So we eliminate the candidate with the least number of first place votes. In this case, we will eliminate Y. So eliminating Y. So now the only candidates we have left are X and C. Let's do X. It's still 7 plus 10. That's 17. Z, on the other hand, has the 13 plus the 11, which is 24. 24 divided by 41, that's approximately 0 0.58. 0 0.58 is greater than 510, so candidate Z does have a majority of first place votes. So here's what I'm going to write. Z wins the election using the plurality with elimination method. Now, suppose the ballots that contained X, then Z, then Y switches to X, or excuse me, Z, X, Y. Now who wins the election with a plurality with elimination method? So we know Z won, and we know Z is going to get more help and more support. So let me draw this new preference table now. So notice the column that contains the 7 I changed from X, Z, Y to Z, X, Y. Okay. All right. Now, again, we know we have 41 total votes. We have already did that thanks to the previous example. So let's go to round 1 again. So again, X has 10 first place votes, Y has 11, and Z has 7 plus 13. That's 20. 20 divided by 41 is approximately 0.49. Well, that's less than 5 tenths, so Z does not have a majority of first place votes. So what are we going to do? We're going to eliminate X because X has the least number of first place votes. So eliminate X from every ballot. So the only candidates that are left are Y and Z. So Y has now 11 plus the 10 that X lost, that's 21, and Z still has 20. So Y, 21 over 41, is approximately 0.51. That is greater than 5 tenths. So Y would win the election using the plurality with elimination method. So let me write that now. Okay, so that's written out then. Now, so Z won the first election. Z received more first place votes, but lost the second election here. Does this violate the monotonicity criterion? And the answer is yes, so let me write that out now. So the monotonicity criterion is violated since Z won the first election, received more first place votes, and somehow lost the second election. Okay, last one we're going to talk about is the irrelevant alternatives criterion. If a candidate is the winner of an election, and in a second election one or more other candidates is removed, then the previous winner should still be the winner. So all of the voting methods may violate the irrelevant alternatives criterion. All right, so let's use the reference table below to determine who would win using the pairwise comparison method. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. So we know it's going to be A versus B, A versus C, 
and B versus C. All right, let's start with A versus B. So B has beaten A, the first column, that's 14. The next one, A is over B, that's 13 for A. For C, A is over B, so that's 16. And then B over A for the 15. So we have 29, 29, so this part is a tie. Let's do A versus C. So in the first column, C is over A. Second column, A is over C. Third column, C is over A. And then the last column, A is over C. So that's 28 versus 30. So C wins that. Now let's do B versus C. So B is over C in the first column. C is over B in the second column. C over B in the third column. And B over C in the last column. 29 versus 29. That's a tie. So let's do total points then. A has a half a point. B has the half a point for a tie plus another half a point. So it has one point. And then C has B A, that's a point, and a tie B, so that's another half. So that's one and one half points. So here we know C wins using the pairwise comparison method. Okay, so suppose A has dropped out. Who is the winner now using a pairwise comparison method? Is the irrelevant alternatives criterion violated? So, I'm going to redraw the preference table now without candidate A. So again, keep in mind the reference table is the same except that we no longer have A and we only have two candidates, B and C. So there's only going to be one comparison to do. So B is over C in the first column, C is over B in the second, C over B is on top in the third, and B is over C in the last one. That's 29 versus 29. It is a tie here. All right? So no one wins using the pairwise comparison method. All right, so we know C won. A candidate that didn't have much to do with anything, candidate A, has dropped, but C did not end up winning the re-election. Is the irrelevant alternatives criterion violated? And the answer to that is yes. Let's write it out now. So the irrele irrelevant alternatives criterion is violated since candidate C won the first election, someone dropped out, and somehow did not win the re-election. Now, they didn't lose it, but they didn't win it either. So it's still been violated here. All right, so final comments. None of the voting methods are perfect. Each voting method will violate at least one of the criterions. This is explained in what is called Arrow's Impossibility Theorem. What to do with ties? We don't want no stinking ties. What are some options? Flip a coin. Pull a name from a hat. Or, more importantly, maybe pick a different voting method. Those are some options in case you have a tie in a particular election.